Welcome to a CoinGeek Conversation special. Over the next four weeks, we bring you mashups of insightful conversations past. This week, we've chosen three entrepreneurs in the Bitcoin SV space. We'll be hearing from Stefan Nielsen of Unisot and Robert Rice of Omniscape. But first up, Josh Petty, CEO and founder of Twitch, a Twitter-like social media startup powered by BSB. You gave a talk in which you described how you wanted your business to be a real business, yes. not just a project. In comparison, the implication was with some of the people building on BSV um, who have a more informal approach. Tell, tell me a bit about that. I think in, in the internet and then cryptocurrency even more so, there's, this, there's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of people thinking, there's new ideas and they're trying a lot of new stuff. So we see tons of projects and sometimes, just like with Ethereum or other things where there'd be a project spun up and it, and it really became popular fast. Well, that project was, it was a project. They had no long-term strategy. They had no way to sustain growth. And, and it's Twitch's primary business uh, a focus is based on how can we determine and, and, and build a pathway for six more months, 12 more months, 18 more months. You know, that's, that's where our heads are at. So we think about the business itself needs to be an economy internally. We need to have a very good team. Everybody needs to be specialized. Everybody needs to perform and execute. Uh, so we create this internal economy where everybody can, can succeed, and that allows the product then to succeed where it's an economy for our users. And then that just extends out. You know, everything you do internally kind of come, bleeds out onto the product. So if you have a great internal process, you have a long-term mindset, you know, the product doesn't suffer from that. So we really think about the bigger picture when we build Twitch. I mean, there, is, there are some things in there that are common with you know, dot-com startups or whatever, the, the sort of idea of a limited period and how much you're going to get done. But there are other things that are unusual in that with your product, the more people who use it, the more money comes in straight away. So you're not in that business about grabbing market share or whatever. So it is a different model really, isn't it? Well, we, we are able to measure that we're building something valuable for people through the, the sort of Satoshis or the little bits of Bitcoin that we can gather. Twitch's business model is based on the actual users doing stuff, interacting. So when users make money and they exchange information and money, that's when Twitch makes money. We don't have to sell a subscription model. We don't have to gather up a bunch of data and sell it on the back end. We don't have to do any of that. We don't have to take on these long time commitments with contracts, with hosting services, uh, things that you see kind of in the current startup world. So, that, a lot of this is enabled by Bitcoin, but part of it also is just our philosophy towards the business. We're going to stay lean, we're going to build things that are valuable, and we're going to iterate along the way. Do you need to raise a lot of money? Are you interested in talking to venture capitalists and so on? I, we're interested in talking to anybody. Um, right now, Twitch is, Twitch is a, in a pretty healthy place from a business perspective. And how much work is sort of like taken off your shoulders by just the way that the Bitcoin blockchain provides services that you need. I, I really like to uh, talk about this point actually because Bitcoin itself can essentially allow your business to do things that other companies needed a million dollars to do. You know, you can save pennies on the dollar doing certain things on Bitcoin. So it's, it's, a, really big, uh, it's a really big advantage when it comes to like taking things to market, when it comes to like testing ideas. You know, if you can store your information on Bitcoin, that's a really interesting thing because you don't, if you have this like sort of back up my database um, mentality, you can actually, uh, you know, you can do that on Bitcoin too, uh, which is really great. And then it's kind of in one place and you don't have to ask permission to get it. So it gives you a certain level of confidence uh, that you didn't have to, that you, you really had to like pay for right. essentially in the other in And the all other of that world. stuff is free. Yeah, it's, it's free. I mean, free, it's, it's free, but if you want to start a startup in, and it's something like, you know, Twitch might have this and other Bitcoin uh, businesses might have it where they have to make these really big contractual agreements, AWS or, or Amazon, you know, these types of services. You know, a lot of companies at scale will have these similar settings, but they have less reliance on those people. And that's, it, Bitcoin itself is essentially going to replace AWS and, and Microsoft and all these, these really big data pools because it just allows for it to be in one place and everybody from a peer-to-peer -peer level a Twitch user can sell their information now. They own it. So in a traditional model, that's not possible. 
Josh Petty there from Twitch. Now from social media to Salmon. Unisot is a data storage platform that can be used across industries to streamline global supply chains by using blockchain technology. In this next interview, its founder and CEO, Stefan Nilsson, explains why the Bitcoin SV public blockchain is the best solution. And it all started with seafood chain in his native Norway. The problem that we see now is we have all these big multinational companies coming to Norway and, and, and breeding fish in a, in a very industrial way. And maybe not always thinking about uh, ecological and, and health aspects and mm. so on. Uh, but we have a, a lot of mid-size companies, uh, mid-size fish producers in Norway who is actually producing very high quality fish. But they have a problem to, to get out on the market on, with that because today they cannot prove that they have a good product. It's just the price and, and, and the package that they, they can uh, provide. But with our system, they can now give a proof of the quality of the, of the product. Now, when you go to big potential customers and talk to them about this, mm -hmm. is, is there a sort of PR problem in terms of, oh my God, Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> and all the sort of, you know, the negative images associated with with it in people's minds so when we go out to companies and, and telling about our solution we don't start with mentioning bitcoin at all uh, we are mentioning bitcoin uh, sorry uh, blockchain because that's still it still had a ma marketing value but we are more selling the the enterprise functionality would be able to to uh, monetize your, your information, be able to buy and sell information, be able to very reliable and, and cost efficient uh, exchange EDI messages with BDI. Then of course the questions comes up, uh, what kind of blockchain are you using? And most of the big companies today have already been educated by IBM and the big companies that, that you should have a private blockchain. And then we have to start educating them in the problems with private blockchains uh, and why we are using a, a public blockchain. And in the end, it, the question comes, okay, what public blockchain are you using then? Yeah, then we are saying Bitcoin and, and immediately the same question comes up, but oh, it can't scale. It's only five to seven transactions per minute. It's only used by criminals. Uh, you can't store information there. So then we have to, to tell them again, so it's it's really educating. Mostly, then the the technical people who's, who put these questions up, they can be very knowledgeable in blockchain in general. But for some reason, they have not followed the the, the development of, of Bitcoin and BTC. Uh, sorry, B, BSV. Yeah. So when we then are telling them that no, actually, it's not used by criminal. BSV even less used by criminal uh, because it's it's all targeting enterprises and we are doing today like 15,000 transactions per second and we are storing tons of information in in each transaction and and then they really the, the lights goes up for them and they oh I haven't followed that that blockchain and uh, most of the time we we we, we get a positive uh, outcome from that. It makes me r remember that sort of famous saying, uh, nobody ever got sacked for choosing IBM. Exactly, yes. Um, that still applies. To that some. still apply very, very much, yes, yes. But, but I, I also see that when we go out to customer and we, we present this, actually, most of the customers we have today has come to us asking for, really? for information and they already have some knowledge about blockchains and maybe they have already tried a private blockchain and see that mm, it comes out that it doesn't work. So then they come to us and ask if we have a solution and then we are showing our proof of concept that we have done and they are stunned and then they ask what blockchain we're using and then we are telling them of course. What would be the most useful thing to happen outside of your own company that would make your business move forward even faster? It's adoption. It's adoption uh, that, that 
some big company or organization should start using this. Mm. So, so if you could go around and say, oh, well, you know, Google's just started something using BSD right. or something, that would just, be... Exactly. The next logical step is to, to go all the way in and actually use an open public blockchain. So it's, it's still a mystery to me that, that so many smart, educated people are, are still using BTC or, or, or a Hyperledger or, or Ethereum and they are not looking into what actually is available today. Scaling, security, instant transactions and everything that, that we have currently today in our system. They are still waiting for that to come. The passionate Stefan Nilsson with a perfect example of what blockchain technology can do thanks to its efficiency, scalability and transparency. Our last featured guest is a virtual reality pioneer. I had the chance to sit down with Robert Rice at an investment summit in Dubai back in 2020. He told me what it was like in the early days of VR, circa 1992. Today, his company Transmira has developed a platform called Omniscape, where they blend augmented reality with virtual reality. The focus? To help businesses, brands, and ordinary Joes to connect with each other, monetize, and provide some pretty interesting experiences. Let's have a little look. I was actually, I had my first business, it was a comic book store, that's what I was doing. And, um, you know, we had a Tandy Teal 2 with you know, 16 megabytes of RAM, the 256 colors on the monitor, I mean, really old. Uh, but one day this guy comes in uh, my store, he's like, hey, I've built a VR machine, can I put it in your store? And I was like, you know, well, yeah, bring it on in, man. And then a few months later, uh, he offered me a job, mostly because I knew how to use a computer and the mouse, like that qualified me. <laughs> Um, and I was his first employee and then things kind of you know, took off from there. And, and so can you tell me then about an early success story from then? Doing stuff like VR back in those days was really, really hard. Um, we didn't have hardware accelerators, um, which you know, every, all computers pretty much have these days. And uh, head-mounted displays at the time were these huge, massively bulky things. You'd put one on and your head would immediately just drop down and you'd get like neck strain. <laughs> and three minutes into it and you're like super nausea, right? This was terrible. Um, but so we had a, a few innovations there to kind of you know clean those up, make them a little lighter, you know, kind of deal with. Um, but one of the other things was we were basically building VR arcade games. Um, so you know we had to build out the whole the box and the unit and all that. And the way arcade games are made back in those days, they basically had you know uh, the motherboard or circuit board was a one-off for that particular game. So we were the first company to ever use PC components in arcade games, and that made things you know a lot cheaper, a lot easier to make faster and give us a lot of other you know, flexibility. So now if we're going to fast forward all the way back to today and what you're doing at Omniscape. So we're at the point now where you know, we've built out a lot of the core tech for this amazing platform. It's got a lot of moving pieces. Um, and I think starting in uh, early January, we're going to open up um, early access, or at least signups. And then starting in February, we're going to be rolling out different parts of the platform over the spring and into the summer. So one of the early pieces is going to be um, what we call digital airspace and virtual real estate which is a whole other really cool thing. And then there's some marketplace stuff and some other tools. Because we don't want to just do things for businesses and brands. We're trying to build uh, the platform, you know, the, or, or maybe the fundamentals for the future that other people can build on. And a big piece of that is, is content creation. I want to make it really easy for you know, grandma or you know, my, my seventh grade you know, child or whatever to create fun and interesting experiences and then share them you know, with their friends and also have the ability to monetize them. I, mean, I think that if we can make it easy for anybody, business, brand, consumer, content creator, to make things and monetize it quickly, I think we'll destroy everybody else. See, I'm glad you mentioned monetization there as well. So can you explain to everyone how that works? How can you monetize this? Um, so there's a couple of different ways. Um, so the first one is super easy, like with the, the businesses and brands, basically. Uh, we kind of treat things a little bit like a Pokemon Go for brands. Mm. So they can, like Starbucks, for example, could do a campaign and basically geolocate 3D Starbucks coffee cups all over the place. You pull out your phone, you find one, you touch it like you're getting a Pokemon, and then you go to the store and you redeem it and there's a coffee. It's great for you. It's free coffee for you, right? Love that. But for Starbucks, it's not about, you know, go to our store and see a fun little thing or scan a label. It's they can place those objects where their ideal customers are. So they can basically reach out and target audience and then push them to the stores, which drives traffic to the store. Now, of course, we here at CoinGeek are big supporters of Bitcoin SV. H how are we putting the world on chain? 
Um, so, so I, I should start first by saying we did a lot of uh, kind of research and analysis because you know mm. when you say blockchain, that means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Yeah. And and as I mentioned, you know, or the last couple of days, and certainly at CoinGeek before, there really is no choice when you compare the technical pieces, you know, size, speed, scale, you know, cost, whatever. Uh, you'd have to be an idiot in my industry to do something else that's not you know, Bitcoin SV. So I just want to say that to everybody. I love that you're saying that. And had you tried on other blockchains before coming to Bitcoin SV? Um, yes, but we didn't go too far down the rabbit hole. You know, just saying like, well, it's going to cost me this to do this, and I got to do 100,000 of these in a day. A, it can't handle the scale, and B, I don't want to pay a trillion dollars for it. Computer so. says no. Computer says no. Yeah, we're moving on. Robert Rice with his incredible plans for Omniscape. So there we are, three very different businesses with ambitious founders who all see opportunities in using the Bitcoin SV blockchain. We're going to be picking three more BSV brains next week when our theme will be the visionaries. See if you can guess who they're going to be. Thanks for watching this CoinGeek conversation special and please join me, Natalie Mason, again next week. Till then, goodbye! is double-edged. Wield it well and build your place in tomorrow. But trust it blindly and risk watching your progress crumble. Because much of the data we rely upon isn't reliable at all. At Enchain, we believe in data. But we put no faith in it. Instead, we build tools that enable enterprises to trust the data upon which they rely. Enchain. Data without question.